so the San Rafael waterfall was really one of the key um, side visit points in Ecuador. So it was actually like advertised internationally, like uh, along with the Galapagos Island, yeah. which is also like one of the spots to visit here in Ecuador. Right. So, so the San Rafael fall, uh, Falls was was one of them. Let's say twenty thousand visitors per year. Mm. And how big was it? So it was impressive. Uh, it was like one hundred and fifty meters tall. So the the Reventor volcano is is sited near, uh, so really close to the Coca River, which is one of our major rivers here in Ecuador. So historically, this volcano erupted. And one of these lava flows that came of those that came out of those eruption uh, eruptions, they basically closed the river. That uh, triggered a process of sedimentation upstream, upstream of this of this lava dam, that eventually, with time, got filled with sediment. But what happened in February 2020? So it 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 just started like the. The water of the Coca River, because the, the, the San Rafael waterfall is is the Coca River, uh, started to find a way uh, near to the left bank of the of the waterfall, and it started a, a piping process, and it ended in the failure of the of the waterfall. So the the, the, the waterfall collapsed. The whole water started to to get beneath the, the this lava dam, which is formed. And right now, uh, after that, we we saw the, the the riverbed 150 meters below this arch of the that that was the former waterfall. Mm -hmm. So you have this giant lava, lava dam 150 meters, and it's completely full of different kinds of volcanic sediment. And then you have the world's largest dam removal, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and and what happened? What, what were the first? What was the, what were the first few months like? The regressive erosion process started, at a very high rate. It, it basically it advanced eighty eight kilometers in the first six months. So the site, in spite of being uh, you know near a volcano, largest one of the largest rivers here, here in in Ecuador, we have a major part of our key infrastructure um, placed in that site. Largest uh, hydroelectric project here in Ecuador. Pablo, what is, what is this what is this thing that's 20 kilometers upstream of the de of the lava dam? Okay, so we, we have the the intake or the the intake for a the, the the biggest power plant in Ecuador. It basically a gives us a 30% of the electrical demand of the whole country, which is big for us. It's a 1500 megawatts a power plant. In the first few months, you have what we call a regressive erosion or essentially a head cut goes eight kilometers upstream. Yeah, but yeah. it's not like just that. I, I mean, it's 150 meters. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So no, no, no structure could face this kind of hazard. Right. Can you maybe draw the picture for us of what, what it looks like out there? It looks like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what I was going to say. So it's basically like the Grand Canyon of Ecuador. What is what is actually being unraveled except this movie. Yeah. Yes, because of the like the nature of these the sediments, yeah. like sand and gravels and other non-consolidated materials so the riverbed is decreasing the, their level and of course the, the slopes are really unstable and the, the valley has widened it yeah. a lot so what's the what's the widest the valley has gotten well uh, so as Pablo mentioned so the river is not only incising it but once once incising starts then the banks get unstable That's so right. they, they get unstable and they collapse into the river uh, course and so then the river flashes all that's that's the sediment downstream and that causes like the the valley to widen dramatically so i would say like in the like in the more critical zone the the the, the width of the of the valley has 
widen about I don't know, maybe 500 meters, 600 meters. That's right. I mean, yeah. it's, it looks close to a kilometer in right. some places. We'll run some of these clips with some images so that people can get a sense of it. But if you try to imagine 800 meters, you know, eight football fields wide, 150 meters deep. We talked about the first few months. What's the status now? How far has, has the head cut moved and how much sediment you know, total has been eroded? The head cut or the erosion front, uh, as we call it yeah. here in Ecuador, uh, has advanced uh, 12 kilometers but approximately, which if you compare the rates, it's first eight kilometers in six months and then two and a half years, uh, the other four kilometers. So the rate has decreased dramatically, which is good for us. Yes. The amount of of sediment that has been eroded is 250, 200 million. 250 million. million cubic meters of sediment have been released. So in, in 250, you know, if you use a, a density of like 1400 or yeah. something like that, we're talking about 300, 300 to 300, 350 yeah. million tons. Yes. Okay. So. A few episodes ago, I talked to Chris Nygaard, who's actually here with us right now, um, <clears throat> about the SRS, the sediment retention s structure that's holding all of the sediment that has come down off of Mount St. Helens. That holds 200 million tons of sediment. So the, the Rio Coca has o o essentially eroded twice as much of that in the last three years. Mm-hmm. 